every success story started with a dream. Your dreams will remain just a dream unless you take small and realistic steps towards achieving them. I am Monica Osaka, BSc Biochemistry. Extremely privileged to have this opportunity to address you at this important moment. A warm greeting to Chairman Ennadi Dalapanand Sir, Secretary Ennadi Prem Kumar Sir, Joint Secretary PER Prem Chand Sir, Principal Dr. C. Nita Lebanon Ebensi Ma'am, Vice Principal Jafia Solomon Ma'am, and all the participants in the audience here for this impact lecture, Section 2, Phase 2. On the topic of intellectual property for student innovators. I am grateful to welcome our resource person, Dr. Deepika Singh, ma'am. I would also like to welcome all the participants, students, faculties who have continuously supported us in our endeavor to spread the light of true knowledge. I request your kind cooperation throughout the program and making it a grand success. Now I would like to call Dr. Prasanna Murali Dharan, Department of Economics for guest introduction. I am Mrs. Prasna Murli Dharan, Assistant Professor in Economics from Annai Violet Arts and Science College. Isn't it highly privileged to introduce the speaker of this session through this virtual meet platform, Dr. Deepika Singh. Dr. Deepika Singh is, is an advocate come independent IPR consultant and patent agent, startup facilitator for patent and trademarks, Rajnahar Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh. At present, ma'am works as an IPR consultant with specialization in patent, trademarks, trademark litigation, legal drafting, etc. Ma'am has done her graduation in zoology from the Delhi University and her PG also in zoology from Delhi University and her PhD in genetics and zoology and her PhD in genetics from Delhi University, provided she has done her PhD by obtaining the JRF fellowship from CSIR. And added to her qualification, she has also done her LLB from Chaudhary Charan Singh University, Meerut, Uttar Pradesh. Additionally, she has done a course on patent analytics organized by Turnip Innovation. And to her credit, she has carried out so many projects to, to name a few. A patent technology scan report, international depository authorities, and the role in HIV treatment strategies and compounds. A patent analysis report. Then she has to accredit many publications. She has presented papers in conferences, workshops, and so on. And she is actually a... Uh, she has extensively trained in intellectual property rights, including patent, trademarks, copyrights, designs, geographical indication, knowledge of laws, etc. And uh, she has worked as a volunteer at Center for Addiction and Mental Health, Toronto, Canada, in the year March 2009. She has obtained many awards, one among us, the award uh, that is the Women Scientist Scholarship Scheme of the Department of Science and Technology India for training in intellectual Women property has been given to her during the year 2010. Actually, if you take a profile, it runs into pages and pages. I have just concised due to time constraint, and she has uh, uh, she has been the president of Zoological so uh, Society. Yal Singh College, University of Delhi, and she has also, and she is also a tech savvy person, and she has got a computer skills, internet tools for patent search and analysis, Microsoft Office, internet tools for research, and uh, she has uh, done many oh, paper presentations and done paper to name a few. Along with her, uh, she has authored with many other authors, co-authored with many other authors to name a few. A comparison of radioactivity and methylation specific polymerase chain reaction in CGG repeat 
sizing, genetic testing, and molecular biomimics. And uh, she has co authored with Sharma Dabral that is relating to one second fragile screening of FRAXA and FRAXA mutations using PCR based studies. I'm indeed really honored and privileged to introduce the speaker who, whose profile runs into pages and who has taken an effort to uh, do services to the HIV patients because many people, when they hear the, to think about HIV patients, they try to distance from themselves. But ma'am has taken an initiative and served, served that. So I really am honored to welcome you to the session, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Good afternoon, Dr. Prasanna. Good afternoon, Dr. Uh, Priya Lakshmi. Thank you so much for having me here. So uh, without uh, uh, any more ado, I think we will move our talk, which is on intellectual property for student innovators. These days, people, uh, students are very, very, I would say, lucky. You have so many resources. Because in our times, we did not have any knowledge about intellectual property. We just knew that there was something called patents. We did not know about any other intellectual property. So at least, you know, this, these seminars are being organized. So students have so much of exposure these days, and they know what intellectual property is. But still, I will uh, move on to my next slide. So what is intellectual property? So you have heard about proper property, which you can see, you can feel, you can see a house, you can see a car, it is a property. But intellectual property is something which is intangible. You cannot see it. It is like you just made up an invention in your head. You thought about an invention or it was a design that you created. You wrote a poem. So you cannot really touch it. It is intangible. But at the same time, your efforts and your time went into it. These are the rights of the creator, the developer, the inventor. These have to be respected. And if commercialized, then this person has to be paid. Then uh, another thing about IP is that it is territorial in nature. So uh, which means that if suppose I apply for an intellectual property right for my invention, I file a patent in India. So it will be protected in India only. It won't be protected in any other country of the world. So these intellectual properties, these are uh, uh, governed by international treaties all around the world. Most countries are members of these treaties. So what this means is that if today uh, an Indian national wants to apply to for a intellectual property protection in let's say canada or in us they will be given the same treatment as they give to their nationals so foreign filing is very much possible with all of these intellectual properties and they are all governed by international treaties most of the laws are same and most of the uh, uh, procedures and the timelines are also similar for most countries now why is the need to protect IP. We have to protect uh, from unauthorized use and unauthorized commercialization by others, protecting from passing off by unscrupulous persons. Somebody may steal your idea. Somebody may steal your poems. They may uh, get it published and uh, reap the benefits themselves. And then the benefit has to go to the legitimate creator. So you must protect IP. Now, next slide. So this is this and the next slide are the most important slide of this entire presentation. I'm going to talk about the types of IP protection. So these IPs are very, very different. A patent is very different from an industrial design, which is very different from a trademark, which is very different from a copyright. So when I am talking about protecting an invention, which is a product or a process, then I have to submit a, an application for a patent for a patent the validity is 20 years only not renewable at all so for an invention scientific invention i have made a product or i have made a method to do something a process to do something that will go as a patent application 
now if, if suppose there is no technicality uh, involved and i am only going by the external appearance of the article design of an article then that will be protected by industrial design the validity is 10 years and if uh, we don't renew it at the end of 10 years then it is 10 years only if we renew it then it is another additional 5 years so total 15 years for an industrial design uh for names business marks logos slogans so these come under trademarks for them the validity is 10 years and indefinite validity because you can get it uh, uh, renewed every 10 years every 10 years for as long as your business is working you can still get it renewed for many many decades even centuries so trademarks are almost perennial if your business is working so uh, another next category is uh, when i talk about expression i'm talking about literary works artistic works cinema films sound recordings theatric theatrical works drama works software computer software and photographs so these are protected by copyrights their lifetime is usually 60 years for literary artistic and uh, musical works it is the lifetime of author and additional 60 years so that is a really long time for a copyright protection that you can have so now uh, i will go on to uh, some natural or manufactured items especially belonging to an area having special attributes for example you must have heard about mysore silk kolhapuri chappal nilgiri tea kanjeevaram silk chanderi silk these are called geographical indications so again like trademarks they are granted for 10 years you can get it renewed for another 10 years then another 10 years then another 10 years so these can also go on forever now another ip is plant varieties or trees which were developed by farmers researchers institutions or any person so these come under plant variety protection so you have 9 years for trees and vines and 6 years for others now there are semiconductor and layout circuit designs these are protected as designs only the act does not uh, the law does not protect circuits it only protects layout circuit designs and this is uh, protection is granted for 10 years so among all the iprs semiconductor and layout circuits are the least used because by the time they submit an application the technology has already changed and another thing is that this act the law does not protect the circuits or integrated circuits themselves the law protects the design circuit design so uh, they have very 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 few filings till now for this lecture i will be focusing more on patents trademarks copyrights and designs so if you have any questions you can just keep writing in the chat windows so we will handle them as i move forward about patents so now i was very clear that patents are granted for innovations inventions scientific inventions the criteria is very strict it is novelty utility and inventiveness novelty means it should be new it should not have been published anywhere in any journal in any book in any chapter utility means it should be useful inventiveness means that there should be some inventive step there should be some technological advancement with respect to uh, existing knowledge the inventor must have done something extra and that is an inventive step the term of grant is 20 years from the date of filing or date of priority date of priority is suppose an application was submitted in usa earlier and uh, then submitted in india so the date of priority is the date when the application was first submitted in us so that will be the date of priority now who can apply true or first inventor can apply his assignee can apply or legal representative can apply assignee it can be an employer for a student and assignee can also be the university or, or the institute they are the ones who can apply and the inventor's names can go as such 
in foreign countries uh, how they apply for patents is that the university applies for patents the university is the applicant the students who uh, act, uh, invented are the inventors and there is uh, an agreement between the university and the students so whenever the invention is commercialized the inventors also get uh, a fair share for their hard work and for their invention so the benefits are uh, uh, divided shared between the applicant which is their university or their institute and also between the inventors now patents can be submitted as a provisional specification or a complete specification so for people who don't know provisional specification is only used to get a date so when i get a date suppose i get to 23rd of july 2022 i've submitted a provisional specification i can submit a complete specification i get one year to submit my complete specification with all the details and all the claims abstract and everything so uh, when uh, my invention is kind of not exactly ready i will go in for provisional specification when my invention is completely ready i will submit complete specification now international filing routes are also present so through the paris convention treaty uh, you can submit within 12 months of priority so if somebody filed an application in the us then within 12 months he or she can application in whichever country they want to uh, or the other way is that they can go through patent cooperation treaty which is through wipo which is more expensive way but you get about 31 months to submit your applications in different countries of the world inventor step as i said is in the act um, it is not defined very well so this judgment vishwanath prasad radeshyam versus hindustan metal industries this has laid down a very clear criteria for what is inventiveness for a patent it should be more than a workshop improvement it should give new results the article produced should be either a new article or it should be a better article or a cheaper article is the manner of manufacture already known yes or no manner of a manufacturer already used in the country then also it uh, it may not be inventive enough there should be no prior public knowledge of by word of mouth or any other publication and uh, another th this thing is uh, judgment is rado versus john tyson uh, limited invention should not be obvious to a person skilled in the art when i say a person skilled in the art it means a person belonging to the same domain so if my invention is from mechanical engineering domain so the invention should not be obvious to another person from the mechanical engineering domain so which are not inventions under the indian patents act so this is a very important uh, slide actually and this is a very important uh, topic i am just going to uh, give you the link also so you can uh, save this link open it yourself and you can check which is uh, whether your invention falls in this or it does not fall into this so you can copy it is on ipindia.gov.in i'm not able to submit this so anyways i there are so many not considered inventions those they are section 3 and another is section 4 Section three is anything which is frivolous or claims anything contrary to well-established laws. Somebody says I have devised uh, something which is an anti-gravitational law. Frivolous and it cannot be patented under the Indian Patents Act. Something that is number two contrary to the order or morality or capable of causing serious injury or harm to human, animal or plant life. For example, bombs, 
or uh, right, uh, the ammunition things. So these cannot be patented under the Indian Patents Act. Then number three is mere discovery of a scientific principle, formulation of an abstract theory, or discovery of any living being. So today, if somebody discovers a species of dino, a dinosaur or fish, that is not a matter of patent. Patent is invention. So it cannot be a discovery of a scientific principle or a new, uh, a new uh, sorry, uh, equation or something. Now we come to point number four, mere discovery of a new form of a known substance, where there is no enhancement of the efficacy of that substance. This relates to chemical uh, isomers. For those who are from chemistry background, they will uh, know very well that uh, substances exist as different uh, isomers. So only uh, just because the substance was already known, it has medicinal properties. So its isomer, uh, the discovery of its isomer does not mean that uh, this can be patented. Number five is substance obtained by mixing, mere mixing resulting in only the aggregation of properties of components. This is definitely not patentable. For example, you mix uh, coconut oil and water. So you don't get any new substance out of it. And uh, there is no aggregation of properties. So it is definitely not a patentable matter. Now, mere rearrangement, arrangement or rearrangement or duplication of known devices, each functioning independently. For example, some mechanical engineering people have this habit they will attach a fan to uh, another device and to a dishwasher and they will say look this is a new invention but they are all working independently of each other so this is only a rearrangement it is not an invention a method number seven is a method of agriculture or horticulture this is not patentable a process for medicinal surgical curative prophylactic diagnostic therapeutic or other treatment of human beings or any process for a similar treatment of animals. This is not patentable, but process is not patentable, but the medicines are patentable, pharmaceuticals are patentable, and uh, any other uh, uh, compounds that are made, they are patentable, but the process of administrating that medicine to the human being, that is not patentable. Now, number nine. Plants and animals in whole or their parts, including seeds, varieties, and species, are not patentable. A mathematical or business method or a computer program. See, it is written very clearly a computer program is not patentable. I will come to it later also. A computer program, a software program is protected under copyrights in the Indian law. It is not protected under patents. Now, a literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work, or any other aesthetic creation. This is definitely not patentable matter. This is protected under copyrights. A mere scheme or rule or method to perform mental act or method of playing game. For example, method of playing chess or Sudoku. You devise a new method. This is not an invention. A presentation of invention, information. Suppose you uh, present your information in a beautiful flowchart. That is also not an invention. Topography of integrated circuits. Integrated circuits, as I just told you a uh, few minutes ago, these are protected under the Semiconductor and Integrated Circuits Layout Act 2000. These are not protected under the Patents Act. Then an invention which is traditional knowledge or which is an aggregation or duplication of known properties. For example, somebody today says that I know about uh, uh, turmeric and turmeric I have used to make this antiseptic cream. This is definitely not patentable because in India, uh, use of turmeric is traditional knowledge. People already knew that uh, turmeric has antiseptic properties. So there's nothing new about it. This is not uh, a patentable matter. Now, section four says no patent shall be granted for any invention related to atomic energy. Atomic energy is not patentable at all under this act. So these are very important. I have shared uh, uh, the share, the link was on page number six. So I will see if I can uh, get it across to you people. 
before you start with an invention you must go through this discuss with each other is my invention following falling in this uh, section or not falling and only then you should proceed because when you decide on an invention when you start developing your products you waste a lot of your energy and your time into it so knowing this section beforehand will save you a lot of trouble so these are the steps in filing of patent application i have summarized it i have made it very very simple it is not even half as simple as i written initially you have to file a patent so there you have a lot of paperwork then there is examination of your patent application examination happens only when you submit a specific form 18 which i will also speak about later and uh, uh, examination is very rigorous very strict a response to examination uh, you have to submit a response within the given time there may be a hearing only then there is grant then meanwhile a patent is also published it is published so that if somebody wants they can oppose it and opposition proceedings uh, go on for that patent and ultimately it is the controller's decision whether the patent uh, be awarded be revoked opposition is also possible after the grant of the patent so these are the steps in the filing of a patent application now important notes for patent filing you should always get a patentability report before starting patent filing because when you ready your invention you, and you have your patentability report you know that these are my parts of my invention let us say a b c and d so i know that a is already known c is already known but b and d are novel and they have utility they are inventive so this is the important part of my invention and this is what i should a focus on and submit patent application so patentability report will also tell you no novelty data available so even if you get a patentability report you can be only 75% sure and not 100% sure that uh, your invention is novel or not but it is always a good idea to get a patentability report now next uh, is that claims are the most important part of your complete specification these have to be very carefully drafted these will define how your invention is uh, uh, presented and ultimately how it is commercialized which claims are carried on which claims are uh, uh, deleted by the examiner and which claims ultimately will be used commercially now the abstract of your complete specification will be listed online so whenever somebody searches online for your invention or related inventions it is your abstract which they will read first and if they decide that they want to read about more about your invention then they will click on your complete specification so abstract is kind of something that will attract all the um, uh, the reader to your uh, to reading your invention now uh, another important point is that some forms have to be submitted in original at the patent office within prescribed time so if your patent attorney says please sign and give it to me right away then you must do so right away because they have to be submitted within 15 days of filing so these have to be submitted with original signatures now for examination as i said a form 18 has to be submitted within 48 months which means 4 years from the time of application but what happens is because if you submit form 18 late then your application will be examined late and if it is examined late then it will be granted late so it is a good idea to submit the specification as soon as so if you don't submit form 18 your application never be examined so form 18 is very very important and you must ask your attorney and 
filing is a very, very difficult, highly technical, expensive procedure. And you should go in for patent filing only when you have all, uh, when you're ready in every way. You have all the experimental data. You are ready to file your application. You know that the patent will likely be granted. And the record at the Indian Patent Office is uh, four out of 10. So only four applications are accepted out of 10 for grant of patents. So this is one uh, case which I picked up uh, regarding uh, a patent infringement. So here the plaintiff, plaintiff is the person who opposed the court uh, with the complaint against CIPLA. So Novartis opposed the court against CIPLA. The drug in question is on Grace, uh, which utilizes, uh, which is protected uh, uh, through five pro uh, product and process patents. This was used to treat chronic of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now the defendant, on the other hand, sued uh, the plaintiff for patent infringement. Defendant launched his own generic version of the drug in 2014 and claimed with the claim that the disease is an epidemic. Therefore, in public interest, patent should be revoked or commercial license should be granted. A commercial license is granted in case of a pandemic. For example, during coronavirus pandemic, uh, some uh, commercial licenses were granted so that some drugs and vaccines could be uh, manufactured on a large scale. So uh, for this drug, for COPD, CIPLA is asking for a commercial license and asking for the generics to be allowed. The defendant claimed, CIPLA claimed that there is a shortage of the drug, but they could not prove this in the court. So the Delhi High Court granted temporary injunction against the defendant in favor of the plaintiff. So uh, the Delhi High Court actually ruled against CIPLA. They said that this is not an epidemic you are not able to pr uh, prove that this is an epidemic or there is any shortage of the drug. So uh, they uh, uh, granted the injunction. Injunction means that they should stop uh, produ producing the generic of the original drug against the, the defendant. So this was about patents. So now uh, we come to the next intellectual property which are the trademarks so uh, as i told you that all these ips are iprs are very very different patents involve a lot of scientific work technicality trademarks involve a lot of legality legal issues so uh, this is very different from patents and uh, trademarks are only and only for your logos slogans names so these are some trademarks which I have uh, copied here for you to see. You can see that there are different styles of writing. You can also see that there are some figures also. You can use figures also as trademarks, which is not an issue. You can use a combination of your logo and word. You can use uh, different types of logos, uh, just the letters or uh, some picture along with the letters. That is also possible as a trademark. Now, a trademark is governed by the Trademarks Act 1999. So, uh, a mark should be capable of being represented graphically. It means that you should be able to draw a trademark and should be capable of distinguishing the goods or services. So, uh, trademarks basically represent goods or services which are sold. So, these goods and services fall under 45 classes. 34 classes of goods and 35 to 45 classes are services and they distinguish goods or services of one person from another. They may include shape of goods, packaging, combination of colors. And trademark is a mark which is either registered under this act or an application has been applied. So as soon as you apply for an uh, as soon as you submit your trademark application, your mark becomes a trademark. So, uh, and a certification of collected trademark, um, trademarks are also considered trademarks. This is the Trademarks Act. So, when you submit your trademark application, your application will now be governed by the Trademarks Act. 
otherwise also you can seek relief in a civil court through cpc 1908 so here also you, if you don't have trademarks act protection you did not submit a trademark application you can still go and approach the court if your trademark is passed off passing off means that someone else passed off their goods as yours by using a similar trademark for example rolex somebody passed on a, a watch with a uh, with a title called rolan which is very similar to rolex so that is called passing off now who can file for a trademark registration a person himself can file or a person who is authorized by the proprietor Uh, a legal practitioner or a company secretary a trademarks agent or a person in the sole and regular employment of the principal so several ip departments in uh, different uh, companies they also do filing for their uh, principals now categories of trademark proprietors these are very different from uh, these are much more detailed than what you see in the patent filing you have an individual person start of msme and others then you have association of persons it can be a body in government department hindu undivided family joint appeal firms limited liability partnerships partnership form society statutory bodies trust and others so uh, trademarks are more legal than patents in terms of filing these are the trademark you have the exclusive right to use you can lease license sell transfer by natural succession or will and you can protect your trademark against unauthorized use by other people you can uh, obtain relief in respect of infringement of trademark and uh, relief under infringement uh, you can claim only after your trademark is registered now trademarks are governed by uh, trips agreement nice classification madrid agreement and madrid protocol madrid system is very important for foreign filing so uh, here again i am uh, reiterating that trademark practices and classes are same or similar in all the member countries of these international treaties nice classification i just spoke about there are 45 classes so some of them are, i'm going to talk about for example chemicals used in the industry falls in class 1 cosmetics is in class for providing food and drink temporary accommodation these fall under class 43 which which includes your hotels and restaurants and inns so trademarks can be uh, series trademarks monarchs certification trademarks collective trademarks certification trademarks are like isi mark fss ai mark ag mark collective trademark is a uh, suppose an association for example society of certified public accountants they use the cpa mark in the united states of america now uh, types of marks in the world example fashion in in class 25 you can have a logo which is like uh, what i've given in the slide it can be a shape of goods for example like uh, these shape of bottles it can be a sound mark for example a uh, samsung ring to or mcdonalds i'm loving it jingle it can be a 3d mark like xbox 360 it can be a color for example purple color pantone 2685c of cadbury's it is registered in uk it has been in use since 1914 so purple color of the chocolates uh, that is actually uh, it has been in use since 1914 but in india they were not able to get a trademark registration for that color now uh, i have the very important part of mass which is section 9 and section 11 section 9 is grounds of absolute refusal they will say if your mark application falls under section 9 your trademark will not be registered and section 11 is relative grounds of refusal so the trademark may or may not be registered 
for section uh, 9 uh, i have given these uh, descriptions a trademark which is devoid of distinctive character which is descriptive for example there is a mobile phone which says the name call me so call me cannot be trademark because it is so descriptive there is nothing distinctive about this trademark or let us say there is payment for a payment app so this is also very descriptive descriptive there is nothing uh, unique about this trademark now a, a trademark should not indicate kind quality quantity purpose value origin of goods time of production characteristics of goods for example cleanse detergent powder this will not be allowed or kolapuri chappal kolapuri is anyways a geographical indication so this won't be allowed as a trademark or courier services which are fast fast is describing the courier services so again this is not a good trade this will be used a trademark uh, which is customary in current language example xerox xerox was actually a very good trademark for a machine but then they did not protect it enough and xerox became very generic everybody is now saying please xerox me two copies of this so since that uh, uh, word was used in a uh, generic way, Xerox has now become a generic term. Another is Domal windows. So, you know, Domal windows are aluminum windows which are used uh, everywhere. So, Domal is, it has become generic for any of the aluminum sliding doors and windows. So this is not a good trademark. In fact, this will be refused. This falls under section one. A trademark which can deceive public or cause confusion. For example, Sony A for a television. This is very similar to Sony now. Or uh, so this will likely be refused. A trademark which is not likely to hurt religious activities of any class of citizen or it contains obscene matter. This will also be refused. Then a mark should not be under the emblems and names in proper use act. For example, emblem of India cannot be a subject of trademark. Then shape mark is not allowed if it is a result of the nature of goods. Example, integrated circuit has these, uh, this is the structure. So if the shape mark is like that for an integrated circuit only, then it won't be allowed. If the shape is necessary to obtain a technical result, example, shape of a car, which is designed in a streamlined shape for enhanced speed. So this again won't be trademark because technical results are protected under patents and not trademarks. If the shape gives substantial value to the goods, example, jewelry. So this will be protected under industrial designs and not as a trademark. Now, these are relative grounds of refusal, section 11, which I just spoke about. So, I, I, your trademark should not be identical or similar to an existing trademark for similar services. For example, I have said, I have, uh, this is actually from, I have taken right from trademark registry, Vegela and Vegela in class 31. Class 31 is for fresh fruits and vegetables. They sound very similar, Vegela and Vegela. So, these won't be allowed. Then NV and NV in class 9 for computer hardware and software. These again won't be allowed. Then trademark should not be identical or similar to a well-known trademark for any good, for any good, any service. For, uh, uh, for It should not be similar to a well-known trademark. Now, a well-known trademark is a mark uh, which have built a reputation for many years and they are recognized very widely uh, the trademark registry has this list, the link for which I have posted here. So you can check out this link and see that uh, uh, these are the well-known marks. Some of them I have stated here. So these, well, your trademark should not be similar to these marks at all. It's not even for the same goods. So you say that I want to register my trademark for Bajaj Hotels. But Bajaj is a well-known trademark, so they will not allow you to use Bajaj for any service, any goods whatsoever. Now, your, the mark should also not be protected by any other law in India or the law of copyright. So, whenever there is an objection to a trademark 
the application it is usually section 9 or section 11 that is cited in the uh, examination report now uh, these are the observations of the supreme court of india for especially for pharmaceutical substances pharmaceutical substances fall in the class 5 of uh, trademark classification so this is a landmark judgment the supreme court has said that one drug falsigo and another drug falsitav in a country where there are so many uh, languages, there is no common language, a uh, large population is uneducated, illiterate, they will not be able to distinguish between falsigo and falsitab. So whenever uh, there is a case for a prescription drug, there should not be any similarity whatsoever between the two drugs. So this is the stand of the Supreme Court. And the case is Cadilla Healthcare Limited versus Cadilla Pharmaceuticals Limited. Now I am giving you some examples. So for some trademarks, if you look at the left side, these were refused, objected, abandoned. And on the right side, these were registered. So when you see the refused, objected trademarks, you see they are very descriptive. They describe the words. For example, thaliwale.com for uh, restaurant services, pizza.com, mytriptonepal.com, drinkanddrive.com. This is against the public uh, morality. This is very dangerous. So drinkanddrive.com was refused. Then tasty.com. These are very obvious trademarks. Uh, there's nothing distinctive out uh, about them. So now I go to what are the registered ones. So you will see how they are different from those which were refused. Agentbox.com, Zomato.com, Stayzilla.com, Wallcliffs.com, Chutti.com, Soup2Dessert.com, Avezika Comfort, GoMojo.com, Clickstay, Clickstay.com. So these, there's something unique about, distinctive about these trademarks, and that is why these were registered in the first place. So when you are deciding on a trademark, always uh, be sure to choose a distinctive word because if you choose a, a, any normal word and then what happens is five years down the line you hear an objection from somebody or you receive a legal notice from somebody that uh, so and so has already been using this trademark so then it will be difficult for you to change the name of your business so before starting out you should give it a thought you know uh, uh, now you know of what you should uh, apply for and what you should not apply for and only then you should proceed with trademark filing. Now, these are the steps in trademark filing. Once you file a trademark, you can use the uh, uh, super, uh, the uh, this word TM. And when it is registered, you can use this R in uh, a circle. Initially, you will file a trademark, which is examined by the trademark office. Trademark is examined automatically. You don't have to submit a special form. So either they will accept or object to your mark. So if they accept it, they will publish it for four months. And if they object, then you have to supply a response and attend a hearing. And if opposition, if any, then uh, you have to deal with it. And only then registration happens. And even after registration, somebody may apply for rectification of the register, which is also like opposition to your trademark only. So these are the steps. Now, opposition uh, or rectification proceedings, these proceed like a notice is given to the applicant. Then you have to reply to this notice. Then you have to submit evidence by the both sides. Then there's a hearing. Then there's a decision. So this goes like a court case only. And it can take at least five years for if your trademark is opposed or a rectification process filed. So it is always better to be prepared or when you are submitting the application, you can already uh, get a search report, extensive search report done, and only then you can uh, submit your trademark application if you don't want to get into legal trouble. Now here, you actions to protect trademark. These are the following actions that you may take. Somebody, you can give a cease and desist notice to somebody. You can say, no, please stop using your trademark. Your trademark is infringing my trademark. So this goes through your attorney. You can give a notice of opposition or rectification at the trademarks registry. 
and here the appeal will go to the high court and then to the supreme court or you can file a lawsuit against infringement of trademark or you can submit a lawsuit in a civil court against passing off which is possible which is not governed by a trademark act but it is governed by the civil law and you can also uh, file a criminal case or a complaint against falsifying and falsely applying trademarks in the court of judicial magistrate class 1 or metropolitan magistrate these offenses are cognizable police officer can address uh, can arrest without warrant and start investigation without permission of the court but, but the opinion of the trademark registrar is required so practical tips for businesses you should get or an entrepreneur you should always get a search report from a trusted trademark attorney before filing and decide wisely before filing because once you file and then if you receive legal notices or your application is opposed or rectification proceeding is filed or you have to go to a court to defend your uh, trademark then you waste a lot of your resources a lot of your time a lot of your money which at the beginning of a business it may not be feasible for you so uh, it is better to get a search report first then another thing is you should use your trademark you should not let your trademark set idle that i got a registration so i'm not using it you should use it because only when you use your trademark that you can protect it in the court in any further future action so if your use is not established you will not be able to uh, protect your trademark then you should avoid using a name or mark similar to well known mark i just spoke about this uh, some minutes ago and you should keep your invoices bills pamphlets promotional materials anything with your trademark you should keep them safe uh, in your custody especially the earliest invoices earliest bills so in case there's some legal action takes place you have all your documents in one place then you you should avoid tm filing through unknown sources unknown sources i mean is uh, unknown websites and uh, people with uh, shady claims that we can submit your trademark applications we don't have very good uh, uh, feedback uh, about filing from these people a lot of people have lost their money a lot of people were told that their trademarks uh, are unique and their trademarks will be registered but ultimately they were not registered so you should avoid trademark filing through unknown sources or through unknown websites now i come to the next intellectual property which are industrial designs so uh, these are some examples industrial designs are only and only about external uh, looks your aesthetic appeal of any article so here you can see a motorcycle design here you can see a jewelry design here you can see some crockery items these have also been protect protected under industrial designs here you can see a vehicle and lastly you can see a, a beverage dispenser which you may have seen at uh, all those shops which sell cold drinks so uh, it is a very a small article but it is uh, design protected anyways so design industrial design protection is available to smallest of articles and to the biggest of articles and it is only and only concerned with the external appearance of the article there is no functionality involved there is no technicality involved for industrial designs now first criteria for industrial design is that it should be applied to an article this article can be manufactured or part artificial or part natural for example you may uh, decide to uh, start selling uh, uh, erasers which are part natural and uh, you can just get it cut in uh, very unique uh, shapes and you can say this is my design for an eraser and you can get it uh, commercially uh, you can sell the uh, uh, you can get a design also and you can sell that article also so design can be a shape it can be configuration it can be pattern ornamentation composition of lines colors applied to any article just just mere drawing or mere ornamentation composition of lines is not is design it should be applied to an article which is most important it can be 2d or 3d it can be produced through industrial process 
and a design industrial design is always judged solely on external appearance there's no functionality involved as i just said it's not like patents the duration is 15 years 10 plus 5 years the articles have been divided into 31 classes and there's one miscellaneous class so in that miscellaneous class you can get all the articles which do not fall in any of these classes you can get them uh, design registered in the miscellaneous class so basically you can get anything and everything under the sun uh, design protected it is very very uh, not much used but it is very uh, useful actually if you look at it your protection is about 15 years for patents you get 20 years and for 20 years you have to pay expensive uh, patent maintenance fee here you don't pay any maintenance fee and you are getting a protection for about 15 years so design and design applications are uh, only judged on external appearance so they are relatively easier to get so these are the steps in uh, design application you have to file then your application is published it is examined then there's office response and hearing and then they decide on your design application now what are the requirements for your industrial design it should be new it should not be disclosed anywhere only 6 months time is allowed it should not be prejudicial to a public order or morality or security of india it should be applied with respect to an article a design can not be a trademark it cannot be an artistic work or a property mark so it should be it should not be a trademark it can be any other ornamentation any other design it should not be a trademark now uh, the items for which a design has been registered these are marked as registered with the registration number or regd with registration number or rd so this is essential for preventing infringement of the design so whenever you are selling your design you write this regd and your number and so the other person know that this is registered they will not copy your design so many articles can be protected under the industrial designs intellectual property act now uh, i come to copyrights this is a very different different uh, intellectual property from all the others copyrights are about expression for example i here uh, attached a painting by leonard afremov this is and i have also written i have cited the uh, painter and i have also written that it is for education purposes only we are not making any sale or profits out of this painting copyrights are only about your expression they uh, are and the rights that they give are also very different copyrights are granted under the copyright act 1957 copyrights are not just one right not just granted to a novel or a cinema film musical work copyrights is a bundle of rights which you will see in a second when i move to the next slide you will know that copyrights involve so many different rights that you will be surprised and copyrights is a very very complex area of work so copyrights includes literary artistic dramatic musical work cinema films performances photographs sound recording computer programs even mobile apps are copyrighted so when if you tomorrow you devise a mobile app you should definitely go for a copyright protection copyrights include right of reproduction you mean you can make sell copies of the work perform the work in public or communicate to the public and adaptation and translation you can communicate it to the public you can translate that work also it protects the rights of authors artists creators and performers copyright is the protection of expression as i just said now a uh, good thing about copyright is that as soon as the work is created as soon as you write a poem your copyright is created the registration only pro proves your ownership in a court of law otherwise as soon as you create your work your or copyright automatically starts for that work now these are the treaties for in, uh, which are called the international copyright order bern convention universal copyright convention uh, convention for protection of producer of phonograms against unauthorized duplication so what happens is because of these international copyright uh, as a result of these treaties as soon as uh, you get a protection in india 
your work is automatically protected in all the 158 countries which are part of this international copyright order so copyright protection is almost worldwide you get for your registration copyright registration you get uh, an international copyright protection in 158 member states this is because most of these member states are uh, have signed these treaties and ratified in their own countries so who is the author of a work so if it is a literary work dramatic work it is the author for a musical work it is a composer for a cinema film it is the producer who is the author sound recording producer photograph photographer and a computer generated work it is the creator who is the author of the work so why i said so is because it is the author's rights which are protected under the copyright now term of copyright if you look at original literary dramatic artistic and musical work the entire life of the author and 60 years after the death of the author till then the copyright is valid it is in it is protecting the author's work now for others which are like a photograph cinema films sound recordings publications posthumous publication government work it is 60 years from the date of publication 60 years is not bad 60 years is a big time now copyrights also include performers rights for example uh, somebody made a movie so they also include uh, besides authors they had act actors singers musicians dancers in their movie acrobats jugglers so they all these performers also have their rights so when they have to when they uh, use their right they are aware of their right they sell their rights to the producer and it is the producer ultimately who sells the film to you and uh, when you uh, purchase your movie ticket to view a movie or you purchase, uh, or you have a connection internet connection netflix connection and then when you see a movie a part of it goes to these performers also so uh, a performers rights means they can make a sound recording video recording of their performance they can make copies of such a performance they can broadcast also they can communicate to public in any other way they claim their claim is they should be identified as the performer so if it is shahrukh khan in the movie it is his right it can be only him and not other person who can be identified as the performer and if they can restrain others and they can claim damages if somebody distorts or mutilates or uh, changes part of his performance that would be prejudicial to his reputation so these are his rights so he has moral rights also and he has his commercial rights also a performer's right subsists for 50 years from the beginning of calendar year the year after delivering the performance once a movie is made a performer signs away his rights in return for a fee to the producer of the film now copyrights also include broadcasting rights broadcast means communication to the public by any means including electronic means so broadcast also means for example we have seen uh, 2020 matches being broadcast now what are the rights of a broadcasting organization they can rebroadcast the same broadcast they can uh, charge the public for that broadcast they can make a sound or video recording they can make copies of such a recording they can sell or hire such a recording so the broadcaster has enough records uh, enough uh, rights for their recording their term for protection is 20 after the first broadcast so the broadcast was in 2022 then their 25 years will start from january 2023 now uh, to safeguard uh, safeguard the rights of the uh, uh, copyright holders we have copyright society copyright society is a registered collective administration society comprising of authors and other owners so only one society is registered for one class of work as so example here is society for copyright regulation of indian producers for films and television script for cinema and tv films 
so this script uh, can issue license it can collect fee in pursuance of such license and distribute this fee among copyright owners after making deductions for their administrative expenses and they can uh, perform any other function which is specified in the copyright laws so as an administrative uh, body copyright societies have an enormous role and they also give the right and the right reimbursement to the copyright owners now what is copyright infringement everybody is talking about infringement a copyright infringement is a person without license without license means without permission also of the owner he does anything which only the owner can do for example he permits any place to be used for communication or work to the public for example he uh, has a hall and in which he screens a film illegally and he asks all the people who are attending to pay him rupees 100 for viewing that film so uh, he permits for profit and he allows his place to be used for uh, screening of that film illegally so that is a copyright infringement and it is infringement when a person makes unauthorized copies for sale or letting on hire for example somebody uh, uh, downloaded a pirated movie and made unauthorized copies and then sold it in some bazaar so that is a copyright uh, infringement of the original copyright holder and somebody distributes those infringing copies to prejudicially affect the right of the copyright owner that is also infringement some uh, public publicly exhibits in infringing copies by way of trade so somebody is uh, hanging those cds out for uh, people to buy on the road side that is also a copyright infringement and somebody imports that infringing copy into india through some nepal or some other channel that is also copyright infringement for co copyright since now that you understand that it is a huge bundle of right so if there is an infringement so many people are adversely affected for any cinematography film the film industry is so much against these pirated stuff because for every pirated film so many performers actors singers musicians all the song writers the screen writers the script writers they all have a right in the film so they all uh, sold their copyright to the producer of the film so when the film does not do well all of them suffer so uh, it is very wrong on anybody's part to buy or download pirated stuff you should always buy original stuff look at original logos original trademarks by going for original inventions through licensed people now uh, this is geographical indication so uh, these are called geographical indications in india abroad these are called appellations of origin it means that these may be the origin of these goods uh, is what is important it the quality reputation and characteristic of these goods is attributable to its geographical origin so we have discussed some uh, like uh, kolhapuri chappals nagpuri oranges and uh, kanchivaram silk chanderi silk so these are all belonging to a geographical uh, origin so these can be agricultural goods Goods. These can be natural or manufactured goods, and in case of manufactured goods, either production or processing or preparation of goods must have taken place in that territory. For example, my source is something. Either production or processing or preparation of goods must have taken place in my source. Now, who can apply for geographical indications? Jo uh, an association of persons, association of producers, or any organization or authority. which deals with that good that they can apply for a geographical indication for their goods for example for kullu apples the association of kullu farmers they have applied so it always has to be an association of persons or the producers who are producing it so a producer may also register himself as an authorized user of the gl for example there is a farmer in nagpur area he sells nagpur oranges so he may register himself as an authorized user and when he sells his oranges next time he can use the gi tag that saying that he is an authorized user and these are nagpur oranges 
and he can use the GI tag of the Nagpur Orange. So uh, registration, as I said, it is for 10 years, and after 10 years, it can be renewed indefinitely. So this I have done a geographical indication I have covered in really short because as students, I feel that uh, you should know about it. But uh, basically, you will be dealing with only four basic IPRs. Now, these are the government schemes which help the students. One is you can uh, submit your IPR protection uh, through your university or through your educational institution. So the government has made filing through university or educational institutions very cheap. It is at par with that of a startup or an MSME. So uh, these are done to encourage invention, innovation in the country and also to promote uh, a culture because students themselves may not have all the money for, let's say, for patent filing and maintaining the patent and all, all those fee, etc. So if they submit through the university uh, or through their educational institutions, then it uh, and uh, for their uh, and they, they can have their names as inventors and they can also get profits once the invention is commercialized. So it pays them well also, and they have an incentive to create something new. So uh, a student can submit through their university or their educational institution. Then there is the Startup Intellectual Property Protection Scheme, SIPP. A startup is a business which is headquartered in India. For IP protection, it should be less than five years old. Uh, a startup can be a, a partnership firm, it can be an LLP or a company. It cannot be a proprietary firm. Their annual turnover should be less than 25 crores. And a startup means that there should be an element of innovation involved somewhere. And a certificate from BP IIT is required for availing the SIPP scheme benefits. So uh, you can also submit as a, an MSME. You can, uh, register your business as an MSME, which is micro, small, and medium enterprises. There also you get very good benefits. So advantages through these three routes are that you have less filing fee. You can get a reimbursement for MSMEs. MSME uh, ministry, for, uh, ministry for Small and Medium Enterprises has uh, given remittances for reimbursement of IP protection for MSMEs. And under SIPP program, there is no attorney fee for startups. So they just have to pay the uh, government filing fee. For example, government filing fee for a trademark is 4,500. So a startup will pay 4,500 only. They don't have to pay attorney fee at all. Attorney fee is claimed from the government. So uh, these are the government schemes for startup and for uh, enabling uh, innovation in universities and educational institutions. This is a new amendment actually, where uh, they have scaled down the, the uh, filing fee for patents for universities and educational institutions. Now I come to my next slide. How IPR can help you? So you can get payment, you can get royalties for your efforts. So in foreign countries, uh, students get payments for their uh, for being an inventor on their patents. And uh, once the patent is commercialized, the inventors also get their royalties and their share of payments. There is higher innovation, there are new technologies in the society. So the new products are actually cheaper and better. Then brand image is uh, of a business depends on their uh, IPRs. Uh, the number of patents that they have, which field of area that they work in, and how strong is their brand. Then the society is also now more vigilant against infringement, fake, pirated goods, and passing off. So earlier, this uh, vigilance was not present in the society. Now the owner has legal right to protect, protect his IP through these IPRs. The IP field also serves as a good employment opportunity for people. And ultimately, it enables payment to the original author, the creator, the inventor, the brand. So uh, IP actually encourages uh, an environment where the original author uh, gets 
his payment is due and and uh, we cut out on all these fake and pirated things so i come to my next slide so at the end i just want to say you should always buy original goods always buy original goods buy original branded things check for the trademarks if it's original trademark or if it is not original always uh, buy uh, always watch movies in a theater or through legal ways don't ever buy pirated stuff so that ways you reward the people who have put in so much of their effort and time in creating something new so with that i end my talk thank you and if there are any questions i will be very happy to share uh, the answers or i can email them and these can be emailed to you After filing the patent, within how many hours it will be granted? In how many uh, years it will be granted? So then, uh, if you file a patent application, a complete specification, and if you submit a form dating for examination right away, then it can be granted within two to two and a half years. Okay, ma'am. Is there any procedure to get out the patent within short period of time? Yes, there is a, a provision. So uh, you can submit another form for early publication of patent application. So usually, what happens is when we submit a patent application, it is published after eighteen months in India. So if we submit that early publication form, it is uh, published earlier. and then the entire procedure is kind of in fast forward so we uh, save about see any, save quite a few months if we go to see, see, mama is there yes, any minimum age limit or a minimum qualification for filing the patent is there is there any minimum age limit or minimum no. qualification is required for a filing patent no 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 ma'am no, no there is no age limit even uh, i have seen school students also who file patent application so there is no issue and you can be somebody very old also some uh, professors have also filed patent application very old people have okay. also filed so that's not an issue at all next uh, next question what is the time duration for the grant of patent that will be filled in india as well as the foreign countries sir time duration okay ma'am actually it depends on each and every foreign office let's say it was filed in usa it was filed in china and it was filed in india so us office will prosecute the application in a different time frame Indian application will be different, different time frame, and Chinese application will be in different time frame. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your informative speech, ma'am. we have learned more things like how to file patent and how to get copyright as well as industrial design of patent filing it is very informative and helpful for our innovations and uh, thank you for your wonderful speech and thank you one and all joining for your active participation in this program feedback link is attached kindly fill it thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you